Moving on to our third section, um, we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit about walking behaviors. We're not going to get too deep into the walking behaviors. We could we could spend the whole hour talking specifically about walking behaviors. But um, I'm just going to be talking about a couple of the parameters, in particular the social parameters, because this kind of influences the pedestrian's personal bubbles, if you will. So the key parameters we're going to be looking at are the a social isotropic, the B social isotropic, the A social mean, and the B social mean. And the reason we're talking about these is because um, social distancing is a, is a large topic right now. And, and these control the person-to-person -person interactions most, most um, effectively. Um, other parameters like tau and lambda talk about queuing and wave propagation and things like this. But this is the base level of, um, this is the, the Weedman parameters, if you will, of the of the headways for, for pedestrians. So some tips for calibrating it is um, just to remember that increasing the asocial uh, parameters, either the isotropic or the mean, increases the general distances between people. So this is this is um, the the primary distance controlling factor. So you know, increasing it or decreasing it will uh, have a very sensitive. It has a lot of sensitivity. So small changes will 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 go a long way, and increasing it will increase the distance between people, and thus decreasing the densities. You can kind of think of these parameters as uh, force vectors. So. As you increase the value of these parameters, um, they will increase the magnitude of those force vectors, thus pushing people apart. And the forces are always acting you know, in opposite directions. B social isotropic and B social mean increase density as well to a lesser degree, but they also control shockwave clarity. So um, if we're talking about queuing, for example, um, they will have a, a bigger impact in single file or banding or conflicting flows and things like that. So um, you'll see you'll see that reverse shockwave parameter kind of happening there. And then um, talking with our development team over the last few weeks about you know how can we can we model uh, how can we cal help calibrate these walking behaviors. In our experience, calibrating these walking behaviors can be a lot of trial and error. So you do a little tweak, and then you you see how the simulation runs. You do a little tweak, and you see how a little sim simulation runs. Um, however, we uh, talking with our development team, we've come up with this uh, calibration worksheet um, because um, where where you can kind of throw in some some default values that you want. So here on this on the left side you can um, enter in the desired minimum distance, in this case in meters, the average walking speed, the estimated capacity, and then your calibrated lambda and tau values, which are other walking behaviors. But by inputting these, it will, it will output um, some of the suggestions for starting points for your calibration. Now, you still will, might need to do some refinement, um, depending on the data that you're seeing. But these are a good starting point for your walking behaviors. That way, uh, you don't have to do as much trial and error. And you can see that these numbers can vary quite widely, um, especially in the B social mean, because again, the B social parameters are um, a little bit uh, less sensitive than the A social. So you see here, the A social parameters are barely changing um, as we go through versus the, the B social. Let me pull up that worksheet real quick. Unfortunately, um, the uh, we have uh, an issue with the with the function for the Lambert function. Um, I updated my my uh, Excel and uh, the function doesn't like doesn't come through as easily so it, it doesn't like this Lambert function. So I'm going to fix that before uploading the file. But here, um, basically, the Lambert function is outputting either a negative one or this calculated value here. So for these first few ones, I just I just inputted the calculated value here. Um, and so we can kind of see how it's outputting the data. So we have a few different um, sets of data for different distances. So we have a distance of you know one meter. Um, 1.5 meters, 2 meters, 
and then uh, seeing what the different parameters are looking like as as they're coming through the data set. So what we'll do is we'll provide this worksheet with the other example files so that you have something to help you uh, with your walking behaviors. But in general, if you want to increase the distance between people or decrease the density, then you need to increase these parameters for the asocial and B so or in the B social parameters to increase those forces between people.